start throwing up uh, post-it notes. Maybe that's too much. And so maybe you still, there's, I think in Nicolette's version, there's still some student voice, actually a lot of student voice. Mm-hmm. It's just you do it ahead of time to sort of soften the blow of this wackadoodle thing we call it again. <laughs> right, right. Um, I haven't done an ed camp with elementary because that's somewhat terrifying. <laughs> However, we were talking about it um, at some teacher meeting I went to in my district, and somebody said you could do it maybe in a way that would have the kids say, okay, I'm really good at this one, at this thing that we've been learning. So maybe you could set it up as, people who want to help others get better at, let's say, for example, long division or converting fractions to decimals or figuring out why certain things happen in history and you could have the breakout sessions pre-set up that way maybe. And sort of like teach the teacher where the students are the teachers and they're teaching their peers? Yeah, that's 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 sort of what we were brainstorming, at least at the elementary level. Um, although, you know, if I really want to be ambitious, I would really like to have a group of kids, you know, sit around and brainstorm problems that we see they see in our school, right? Mm-hmm. And start proposing solutions and trying them out and things like that. But I don't know. I like that idea. I think that's a good a good start. Um, Two years ago with my third grade students, we did sort of an ed camp, but not not like a traditional ed camp. They just chose things they were interested in. So like coding was one of them, makerspace. Um, It was before I had taken all the desk out of my classroom and, you know, put in flexible seating. So that was one that I kind of like pushed a couple kids in the direction of so they could design my classroom. But in the they moved through, um, so it wasn't exactly an ed camp, but they chose where they wanted to go, and like the coding kids, I knew nothing about coding, so they just, you know, got on code.org and got busy, started teaching themselves, and the kids that were interested in makerspace started designing what we needed to have a classroom makerspace, and then also making things, so it was pretty neat, but I would like to have a true student-led ed camp where I'm not like, hey, y'all should try this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But do you, when you, again, when you when you say it, true student-led ed camp, do you mean the, the, the true, true way where you just come in, propose the topics, and then they just go ahead and, and talk about them? Yeah, I think that would be interesting. Mm. I know for the last couple of years as we did Ed Camp Bramford, uh, I've had more and more students volunteer to help for the day because yeah. they get to be a part of that student voice and they actually go into the sessions and participate right alongside with the teachers. So I'm mm-hmm. hoping that we're coming close to a time where we have enough students who understand the model that, oh, you know, okay. you know, that some mm-hmm. of them, you know, I'm hoping, I'm trying, I'm gently nudging <laughs> That yeah. some of them say, okay, we want to do this for ourselves. And, you know, maybe even not a full Saturday, but maybe for a couple of hours after school one day, have a student-led right. ed camp and, and then have like 30-minute sessions. That way they just get to know, because I really think it's important for kids to get to know who else shares their passions. Yeah. And, and that, at a secondary level, it can be so powerful. Yep. Yeah. But Tammy, just to um, clarify the first part of what you just said, so you said that the kids would attend the ed camp with the teacher, so the same way they just sign up to go see whatever topic that the teacher's talking about, they would just be included in those conversations, so that's not the, the student-led one just no, yet. Not okay. yet. Not okay. yet. Okay. I love that. But that's what we've been doing for the last couple of years. Um, mm-hmm. This past year, I had I had so many kids who showed up to volunteer that I had to tell them to chill for a little bit. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so, you know, I think that we're, we're really close to being in that spot where the kids can, can um, do their own. I mean, I, I want to give them that opportunity. And, you know, this group here, you know, every, all, seeing all of you interested in doing it, that's just 
that's just um, encouraging us to step out and try. I mean, right. Yeah. So what if five kids show up? There'll be five kids who get to connect with kids that they wouldn't have connected with before. That's how, I love that idea of doing it with the teachers. Mm -hmm. So, like, we want to hear every voice in the room. So, dream big. What grade level do you use? Uh, where would you do it? Um, with who? How big? Uh, what time of day? What day of the week? I don't know. Anyone have any ideas? I like the after school idea. And it would be nice maybe in the beginning to try by grade. Or um, we have a school within the school. Uh, maybe try it out with them first. Uh, and see how they do because I think they could do it and they could learn a lot from each other. The yeah. only thing is at high school, I don't know about you, but they're so overextended in what they do after school. Right, and that's why as soon as you said the after school, we, I was like, okay, so we tried, we tried the after school and it didn't quite come together because there were just too many things going on after school. So we ended up going for a Saturday morning and it was from 10 to 12. And it was very well attended, pretty well attended, I must say. So I think a Saturday might work best. Well, it worked best for us. The after school was just too much. But how long is it? Like, what time frame? An hour, two hours? Like, what? how long would the egg camp be? Or how long would your egg camp, Nicolette? The one we did was from 10 to 12. It was only two hours. Mm -hmm. And they were for 30-minute 30, 30 sessions. Yeah, at my middle school, we have a required extended enrichment for all students an hour after school, so we could probably do it just extended an additional hour because they're required to stay. It's like, you know, time to do different things. Right. That would work for us. But then who would be who would be the primary audience besides, like, you have the student-led ed camp. Who else would be there? Like, who else do you see attending? The teachers, the community parents, um, you know, well, I was thinking, well, I guess my first thought would be other students who are interested, like who would say, you know, ed camp for school leadership, you know, uh, or school voice. We have a lot of students who want to feel their voices aren't heard, so it might be something like that. I think about a little bit more, but I know after school will work for us just because we do have that time frame, and then we have Saturday Academy every other Saturday, so right. that might be the only challenge. I love the idea. I can't remember who gave it. Somebody said, like, start small. And I think that's brilliant. You know, it's, I, I think just, I think for an ed camp, I, I'd like, I like at least two rooms. I've been to an ed camp with 15 people. It was fine. That's plenty of people. for One room is a little, because you can't really, you can't really choose. Right. You know, so, but I don't think I'd start with, like, 50 kids would scare the heck out of me for a 1.0. Unless I had, like, half of them would have done it already. For 1.0, I'd want to go, like, three rooms ish what 30 ish kids max like one cloud standard classroom which i think people have done um so that's sort of one brainstorm i had and there are two experts I, one of them's here ashley brown she i saw her in chat i think she's an expert anyway so there's that and it's somebody named dane i don't know his handle or anything I, apparently he's like i've done it a few times um none of those are really questions i'm just throwing it out there Anybody else want to do? I have another thing idea, but I don't want to. I want if, give everybody a chance to to go. Anybody else want to? Any thoughts, dreams, hopes about? Uh, uh, I can. Yeah. No, I, I like the ideas. Even for elementary school, we start at nine. I was putting it in the chat that we could always start like at eight or a quarter to eight, and do at least you know two sessions that day to get um, the students introduced to it for a small group and then we could spread afterwards because I know my students I teach at after school they have a lot and our school offers different sports and intramurals for our students but another idea I had and it's not ed camps but I do the play dates out here in Vegas and um, in December my goal is to have a play date for kids and have them come and tinker with different apps and share and collaborate that way could you elaborate on play dates? I, I, like, I know play dates is when two kids play together, but I think you're talking about right. something else. Right, 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 please. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so 
Play Day is similar to it's another movement of similar to EdCamps, but you have different apps, different tech devices, and you get together and you tinker, you learn about the different technology within your classroom. So some people might be Spheros, Ozobots, um, laptops with different apps on them. Um, Tammy can jump in too if she wants. Um, you know, your Google Cardboard, all that, and you come, you share, you collaborate on how you could integrate and use them in the classroom, but I wanted to flip it and have the students show how they use these. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, nice. Because, because when I got a Sparrow from Santa Claus <laughs> this year, uh, I brought it to the class, and then what, that's how one of, I found out one of my boys has a Sparrow, and he taught me a lot about the Sphero because I didn't have time to sit and tinker with it and then we started a club together using his Sphero wallet and mine. Okay. So getting those students that stay quiet right. because they don't want others to know that they're geeky or whatever it may be. Right. Um, it brings out um, kids you never thought would have these tools at home. You know, can you paint, us, paint me a picture? Like, So I love the idea. Like, It's like it's like sh- tech show and tell or something on the exactly. weekend. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You've, you've done it with teachers bringing the toys. I think I heard you say you've right. had it with mm-hmm. teachers bringing the toys. You want it, or you're, you're envisioning doing it with students bringing the toys. When you, the way you did it, could you yeah. tell us, like, how did the day flow? Like, how did it go? How many did you do? What worked? What didn't work? Um, it was a small group, and it flowed very nicely. We met um, in a classroom, and in that classroom, and then how the school that we're at, you have, like, a classroom, and then there's, like, a pod area. So that school had a makerspace, so we got to see how the makerspace works. And in the class, we had, like, different section um, to talk and to um, use the different tech. And then in a f- two weeks, um, I scheduled another play date, and we're going to do it at the makerspace place here in Las Vegas. They're really nice, and they're not charging us because there's a membership fee for the makerspace shop. Mm-hmm. We're going to go there, and they have some rooms and they have a 3D printer, and then we'll move around there and collaborate. It's kind of just the same motto of EdCamp. You right. just kind of move or change the conversations as needed. The Is one, it a Vegas thing? I'm sorry. No, it's not a Vegas no. thing. I I'll attended drop it in one, the link. I attended one um, in, where was that? Orlando? I can't remember. Golly, I've, had, I've attended so many different things. Um, it was at the, it was in Orlando. It was at the Crayola Experience at the Florida Mall, and so we just kind of took over a couple of tables. They let us in for free because it was arranged ahead of time, and mm-hmm. uh, we took over a couple of tables in the in their in their um, food court, and we just spread out the toys and. You know, you went to whatever table, and you just kind of floated from table to table to see. I mean, there was Play-Doh, um, there was natural Play-Doh, there was uh, 3D, you know, the quiver and, and that kind of virtual reality stuff. We had uh, some cardboard projects that uh, Sean Farnham, Magic Pants Jones on Twitter, brought in. Uh, he actually was the one of the ones, he and Jennifer Williams were the two that organized this particular one. Um and it was just really cool to, because we had the gamut. We had elementary to secondary, and we got to see that vertical alignment that I was talking about in the other session um, of how these things could be used, you know, in a kindergarten room as well as in a, a high school room, you know, and the and the adaptation adapting for the different levels. And so, you know, and then we just got to have fun. Oh my gosh, teachers don't get to have as much fun. As we should. Yeah. Um, Tammy, what, what tools were a hit? Like at, at your play date, what what worked super well? Um, you know the the hands on things worked. Real, I mean, they were all really awesome hits. It was just cool to be able to see that variety, and and there was there we had Spiros and we had you know a little bit of everything, and and I think <laughs> some of it was tech and some of it was natural play doh that used spices and things, so you got that. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So, so like low tech stuff too. Mm-hmm. And so it was a play date. It was how do you play in your classroom? 
and we had uh, Sean brought a skateboard made out of cardboard that one of the kids had designed and um, you know it was just a really liberating experience you know, was it had, state, statewide or, or like district? Like, how did that work? It was. It was. He put. He and Jen were at a conference and happened to be up at five thirty in the morning because they couldn't sleep and got talking <laughs> about playing in the classroom. And next thing we know, this date was created and they started finding a space. And you know, it oh, was wow. um, very organic. They actually didn't know that there was a movement. I mean, they did it kind of on their own and then found out later that there was a movement. Wow. They yeah. didn't even know what it was called. They just did a play day. With it. That's yeah. awesome. It was very organic. And um, so, you know, it was educators from all over the state. Orlando was a very central spot. And so, mm. you know, Sarah actually came down for it from D.C. Oh, my God. So, <laughs> wow. Yeah, it was. Oh, shocker. Sarah travels someone for a conference. Who yeah, would have thought it? Yeah. How many people did you get? How many teachers did, did um, you get? There were probably about 20 of us. Nice. Yeah. I mean, and for and for something that we had never really experienced before, um, you know, but just the idea, I mean, I had never been to the Crayola experience before. That was interesting. So, right. that, you know, it didn't have to be there. It, you know, Heidi did hers in a classroom, and you know it really isn't about the space; it's about the mindset of the people there who are willing to include play. And like I said, I had never even thought of including spices when we made our homemade play-doh, but now you've got that olfactory, that that extra sense, and mm -hmm. you know it. Who knew that spices changed the color of the clay? And I mean, it was just refreshing it was very refreshing to see all these different um avenues i mean we had crayons on one table and we had play-doh on another and and we we were doing um i mean it was just it was a wide variety of toys but tammy tammy if i can ask you who who brought most of the stuff like where did the, the where did the toys come from Pretty much everybody brought what their favorite was. Okay. Yeah. I mean, um, there were a couple of people that, you know, Sarah couldn't bring her, her, um, hoverboard. Mm -hmm. That was just, just about the time that they said you couldn't take them on a plane. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. But, um, but pretty much everybody that came had something. Oh, how long did you go? Like a, two hours? Uh, yeah, it was probably about two hours. You know, we actually closed the Crayola place down. <laughs> and then okay. we figure out where to go for dinner. I mean, we, the group pretty well stayed. There was a large portion of us that stayed together for, for dinner afterwards. Yeah. Who says so, we don't know how to party, man? We, we closed the Crayola place down, man. Yeah, <laughs> we closed them <laughs> down. We melted oh those God, crayons. <laughs> hey, can maybe you mind if I jump in about this? Because oh, yeah. I was there. And one of the coolest things about it was I had met Tammy and Sean and Kristen and, and, and Jen and other people at, at Ed Camp. But this gave us time to bond. Yeah. Or even strengthen our bonds because it wasn't so much about, okay, I'm here and I've got to learn and I've got to do sketch notes and I need to tweet about it and I need to blog about it. It was more, you know, let's have fun together. Right. And, you know, if you learn something along the way, that's even better. But it was the bonding. So, you know, after that, I came out of it feeling like I had finally found my tribe, yeah. which was something I had been looking for. Right. So that, to me, was powerful. Yeah. Kim Kimberly, I'm really behind. What are you referring to? Are you at Tammy's event? Or are you talking about, I forget which event you're talking about. It's the same, it's the same event. I was you, were, you were at Tammy's event. Yeah. Or, I mean, Sean's event. Which Sean's came. event, yes. Right, right. Wow. So you were there. Wow. And now she I, moderates I, split chat with us. Cool. Regarding Tammy's event, was, what was the follow-up like for that event? Um. Well, I mean, it was just us staying in touch with one another. I mean, like like Kim said, 
it really created a tribe of people who were willing to think outside the box. Because even at Ed Camp, there's a, still a lot of in the box thinkers at Ed Camps, even though that seems kind of strange. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, there still are teachers who are are don't feel empowered. To step right. Is this annual? Is this done annually, or is this something that you're going to be doing? I mean, is this is, is this something you're going to be doing in the near future again? And is it going to be the same venue, or how is it going to be Barbara, done again? Are you constant? Are you interested? <laughs> you, it sounds interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, she wants to step one up in Florida. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That, I know that Sean and Jen are looking at um, what to do next. So. Mm -hmm. I, Kim and I can definitely pass that along, can't we, Kim? Absolutely. I think we have like two minutes left. I wanted to squeeze this in before we ended, and I think I, there's a, Sarah's got like I don't know how many working groups she has, but there's there's like a I forget what she calls it. There's a little working group that's like a subset of Edgy Match. I think some people in this room. I think Nicolette might be in it. Which which one? What the are we, one. What are we, the community that's action? The brainstorming. That's the brainstorming community. That. Yeah. So. I think, yeah, Nicola and I are in there. And so, you know, we it's been relatively active this week. And, like, so I got my new, my, my new, yeah. Barb, Barb, you're in there, right? Are you in there? Yeah. Yeah. And so I just joined, like, on Wednesday or something. And so she's just really intricate. They did this super intricate design process. Like, the whole, like, a big there's a Google document, and they're doing, like, the ideation and all that stuff. And then there were a lot of ideas thrown around. And the one idea I latched onto, and it's like it's, I, I don't, I, I get, so I was super pumped about. Like super pumped about. I'm, I'm pumped since Ed Camp Global last week. I've been super pumped about online Ed Camps. Right. I'm super pumped. And like, I, I was, I'm just noodling. Like, and I think there's like a 64 percent chance of this happening. Like, like there was some a student online. Mm -hmm. Like, I guess Ed Camp Global for students. So that's we. That's one. It's not like the only thing coming out of that working group. But that's like that is one of the ideas. I think there's a better than 50 percent chance it could happen. Like, I'm sort of envisioning like. For me, I think I could get permission from administration to take it five kids who opt in. I'm thinking after school. I don't think I could convince them to do it during school. But right. like after it's, school, it's, five it's kids. It's versatile enough that I think they can. Maybe yeah. I could. Maybe I could convince them. But but we, and I, there are a few people in EduMatch already sort of said, yeah, maybe I, you know, maybe I'd be into that. And I, and, and and it's funny. The reason why I did this session is I just like we were, remember we had that chat last night and like I was one of the questions I forget what, and I said, hey, how about online? And like I. I never get like you know, like five likes, but like five likes. I was like, okay, this. Might, I think people like are. This, I, I think you could. I think we could pretty comfortably get ten to twenty <laughs> matchers and non-edu matchers, and get each get five kids after school. Right. And we have to, we'll think through because there's like safety issues and last names. Like there's a whole lot of like planning that would go into it. But you know, there's a. I, this is something that I'm super interested in, and now our schools about to start, so probably not for a while. But anyway, just wanted to throw that Matt. out there to the team, Matt. Uh, when you when you say that, you, so you said a couple of, a couple of things. So let me just kind of break that down. So you want to do student led at camps, right? Now you want to do that online, right? You want to do that with um, collaboratively. Like let's say we all got about five or so kids to come together and do an online ed camp. Um, is that what I'm hearing? That's it. Okay. Well, Did you have you thought about uh, what platform you'd like to use for them to do that? I get this. I, the planned asynchronously on Voxer, and to keep it super simple, I'm that's super in love with Voxer now. Just yeah. Voxer, no yeah. Google Hangout. No. Yeah, that's cool. We've got to super scaffold it. Just Voxer's a sweet spot, right? No faces. Kids don't like you know. No, no weird middle school. Oh my god, I'm on camera. You know, right. yeah. like uh, voice only. There's text too, so the shy kids can type, right? right? So I'm thinking. I think I think Voxer's a sweet spot. Uh, I don't know. No, I definitely agree with you there, yeah. um, and I'm, I would definitely be on board with that because I was already planning to do something like that with two other schools mm -hmm. that um, I work with, and uh, so if we if we think and want to move forward with that, I'd definitely be in. Yeah, awesome. Black mm -hmm. awesome. Well, I, I think we're about to get the hook. Uh, anyone have any closing comments, thoughts, oh, feelings? Nope, let's do it. Matt, make sure you stay in touch. Uh, I have some contacts inside Boxer, and let's see if we can. Uh, I can definitely get you a write up on their site. And oh, let's, nice. Yeah, let's see what we can do about getting I, I, Boxer. I mean, no, we're all we're all at Edge Match, so like I'm sure we'll if if it happens, we'll put something in the main room. Like we're kind of off in the side room. If it comes to be, and it may or may not, we'll put it in the main room, and then everybody will know about it. And it'll be super awesome. 
Well, I think we have to stop. Can we have to stop? Yeah. Yep. What do right. I do? I just hit, I just hit hang, hang up? Do I hang hang. Yeah, you just hit hang up and you go back to the main room and we'll go from there. Okay, bye everybody. Yeah. Bye. Bye.